Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Well, let's talk about the curse of busyness. <laughs> How many of you are too busy? Come on, don't give me none of this stuff. Let's see. When one of my granddaughters was eight years old, she's now 18, and... She's actually here in the service. Abby, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I'm trying to find exactly what you said so I don't mess it up. But she had to do some kind of paper about if you were going to give a gift, what kind of gift would you give? And she said, if I could give a gift to anybody, I'd give my grandma the gift of time because she's always so busy. And uh, so people notice. She was eight, and she noticed that her grandma was busy all the time. Don't be so busy, just being busy, that you don't have time for the things in your life that are really the most important. Don't just park your kid in front of a television, talk to them. Amen. Americans are so busy, and we wear our busyness like a badge. We're proud of it. <laughs> Let me tell you how busy I am and how much I've been doing. And sometimes I just want to say, but is it worth anything, or, or is it even what you're supposed to be doing? And today in our society, and I think most of you will agree, we have got an epidemic of people not keeping their word. I mean, I am so tired of that. Just so tired of that. You have an appointment, somebody doesn't show up. They don't even call you to tell you they're not coming. You call again. Well, what happened to you yesterday? I had, a, had an appointment. I took off work to meet you here. You didn't show up. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got, I got so busy. Well, I thought you were going to call me back. I'm sorry. I, uh, I just got so busy. I've, I've just got so much going on. I'm just so busy. You know what? That is a lame, <laughs> dumb excuse. I mean, sometimes you can get busy and forget something, but if your excuse for not keeping your word is I'm busy, then you need to rework your schedule. Here's why, and I'm going to tell you a secret, and you can believe this or not believe it, but we all have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's not like, you know, I have too much time and you don't have enough time. <laughs> now, in a lifetime, some may live longer than others, but we all have 24 hours a day, and it's amazing to me that some people can accomplish so much with their time while other people just do absolutely nothing with theirs. And so I want to say, are you busy? But what are you busy doing? <laughs> what do you have to show for it at the end of the day? What are you going to have to show for it at the end of your life? How many really good friends do you have? You got to put time into stuff like that. And you know, I don't mean this at all to be disrespectful. They've both passed on, my mom and dad, and thankfully they're both in heaven. And so since in heaven you can't get mad, they can't get mad at me for what I'm going to say. So. 
Uh, and they would agree now that they see the other side, but my mom and dad, they just basically wasted their whole life. When my dad died, he was 86. There was nobody that cared one thing about him. Didn't have any friends. I mean, I took care of my mom and dad until they died. And, you know, we, we tried to treat them decent, but because of what had happened in my life, it was never really like I had a, a real mom and dad. And I had one brother who ended up committing suicide from drugs and alcohol. And they didn't have any money. They couldn't take care of themselves. They were sick. Life is a gift from God. And every day that you have is a gift, and it's precious. And when I say don't waste it, I'm not saying that you have to be working all the time. The, the thing is, is to learn about God's rhythm and to learn how to discern and sense what you need to do when and not be just led around by emotions and feelings. You know, if, if you know that you've got a mess in your home and you need to stay home for a few days and get things cleaned up, you can't get emotional every time somebody calls and wants you to take off and go somewhere. You gotta be able to say no and stay focused and get the things done that you need to get done. But there's also times when you maybe want to work all day, and I would have a problem like this, and the better thing to do is not work at all and just lay on the couch all day in my pajamas and watch movies all day. And that's not a waste if it's something you need. But if you're doing that every day, <laughs> then there's a little problem. So we have to have balanced lives, but just being busy. People, here's what I was going to tell you. You put your time into what's really important to you. If something is really important to you, then you will find the time to do it. So to say, I just can't find the time to study the Bible. I just can't find the time to pray. Well, time's not hiding from you. It's right there in front of your face. You don't have to go find it. You've got it. All you got to do is rearrange what you're doing with it a little bit and start putting first things first. And when you put first things first, everything else will seem to fall into place. Don't major in minors. Amen? John Maxwell, many of you probably heard of John Maxwell. He's, he's awesome, and I have the privilege of being able to call him my friend. And He said this, that we should put 80% of our time into the top 20% of our strengths. Most people waste their time trying to strengthen their weaknesses. And they may improve only a very little no matter how much effort they put into it, while they ignore the development of their strengths and things that they could truly excel at. If everything is a priority to us, then nothing is a priority, and we live confused and frustrated lives. Some people try to do everything, so they end up doing nothing really well. Amen? Peter Drucker said, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently what should not be done at all. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently what should not be done at all. Now, one of the things that we need to do, Philippians 1 talks about, it's one of Paul's prayers, and um, it's interesting to me the things that Paul prayed for the church. His prayers were vastly different than 
a lot of ours is. He said, I pray that you might learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best and distinguishing the moral differences so that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, actually living lives that lead others away from sin. Now, one of the reasons why I like the Amplified Bible is because I'll get something like that out of it. Now, see, that makes it plain. He wants you to live a life that actually leads other people away from sin. So, you've heard it before. Good is sometimes the greatest enemy of best. We think we might be doing a good thing by working at church five or six times a week when it actually might be a better thing to work there twice a week and spend those other hours that you were working at church because maybe it made you feel good about yourself. Might be better if you spent those talking to your teenage kids. <laughs> so they don't try to have to learn everything they want to learn off the internet. Come on. Now we're going to talk about pruning tomorrow. How many of you know what pruning is? Oh yeah. You're going to have to be bold to come back tomorrow. Because Jesus said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, <laughs> he trims it away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes it so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. So I finally got it. You're pruned if you do and pruned if you don't. So, in other words, here's the bottom line. God is not going to leave you alone and let you stay the same. Amen? <laughs> God is after you. He wants to make every single one of us a better person so we represent him better in the world because people are dying and going to hell by the thousands every day. And let me tell you something, there are enough Christians in this earth that if we all got out there and acted out what we say we believe, I honestly believe the world would already be saved, Jesus could have come back, and we'd already be out of this mess. And pruning means to cut away dead parts. God is not interested in dead stuff. Amen? The one guy that Jesus called, he said, well, let me bury my dead relatives first. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. <laughs> Come on. What kind of dead things do you have in your life? things that are sucking up your time and bearing no good fruit at all. Every one of you, and I'll include myself, if we would really be honest about what we're doing with our time, everybody in here can find time to do the most important things in life, which is spend time with God, know his word, develop good relationships with people, all of those things are actually more important than making money. <laughs> they are. And we spend so much time trying to climb the ladder of success. Don't spend your whole life doing that and when you get to the top, finally realize your ladder's leaned against the wrong building. <laughs> that you got what you thought you wanted, but it's not what you wanted after all. Don't just be busy. Make sure you're bearing good fruit. Stay tuned for a candid conversation with Joyce. Today on our candid conversation, <laughs> let's talk about those times that 
I have so many of them. I hope other people do too, so I don't feel quite so weird. <laughs> that it's almost just like God saying, "No, don't don't say that." Just <laughs> just like He goes, "Shh." Oh, no, I don't have any trouble. At all. <laughs> there there are many different times in my life that I can think of that it was just so strong. It's like. I'm not. I'm not supposed to say that. So, yeah. are there examples that you have of that? Oh well, sure. I mean, I can think. I don't know how many examples you want, but I can. <laughs> uh, first of all, if I'm with somebody and anything gossipy starts, anything bad about somebody, I mean, I know in my. I want to say gut, but I mean in yeah. my spirit that just like no, don't, don't, don't even go there. Don't go there. But we are so nosy. We oh, just, yeah. We just want to, I mean, it, it's so hard when somebody says, did you hear about so-and-so to say no, and I'd rather not, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, another time, I've really learned how to stop arguments between Dave and I by listening to the Holy Spirit tell me when it's time to shut up. Mm. You know, because normally we want to prove our point, mm -hmm. which, I mean, is being right that important? Do you want me to say what I know is true or what I feel sometimes? <laughs> 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 no, it should not be, but it sure feels like it is sometimes. I know, but, you know, that's one of the things that the Bible says about love is that it gives up its right yeah. to be right. And... Uh, one of my sons used to have a real issue with that. I mean, he wanted to be right, and he was going to argue with you until he got right. And he, I remember as he got older and grew, which we all, we, as we grow, we, get, we learn how stupid some of that stuff is. He said, you know what I've learned? Being right is highly overrated. I mean, it's really, what do you get out of it? Mm -hmm. You get this little smug feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the Holy Spirit really will. It's just like, shh. You mm -hmm. just you know you know similar it's similar to that one of them that that I'll get is um, I I don't need to say well, I already knew that or I was going to do that already right like, yeah. it's just not necessary <laughs> something that God has has dealt with me about is when somebody has something good happen that I don't have to say I prayed for that. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Because that's really me stealing God's glory. Oh, wow. It's like we want, we want them to think, well, that happened because I prayed. <laughs> you know? And I'm not saying I. Now, sometimes I think it's beneficial for somebody to know that you've been praying for them. Sure, yeah. But I think if somebody's saying, you know, God did this and God did that and God, you know, they're really giving God glory and you're like, that's exactly what I prayed for. It's like, I mean, isn't it really just stealing God's glory? Yeah, I, and so I can see that. That's you know, and I guess the longer you walk with God, and hopefully the more spiritually mature you get, the more God deals with you about things that maybe He doesn't deal with somebody else about, or didn't deal with you about when you were yeah, that's true a, a younger Christian. Sometimes we're not and, ready. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, just talking too much. Sometimes you just need to be quiet and let somebody else say something. You know, overcorrecting people. Uh, Dave has a habit of leaving the light on in his closet. And, of course, he says he never does. I don't know, I don't know who he thinks leaves it on. Uh, it's not me, but he says, nope, I didn't leave it on. And I swear he leaves that light on probably 80% of the time when he goes in there. And, of course, I always had to tell him, you left the light on again. You left the light on again. And the Lord just put in my heart, why don't you just turn the light off and keep quiet? <laughs> You know, there's so many— Was that hard at first to well, do? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why Why do we get such a big kick out of telling people if they did something wrong? You know? Yeah. Uh, it's When you really stop and ask yourself, what is my motive in doing this? Motives are—I mean, you get down to talking about motives, and you know that's really what God cares about. He's not, It's not so much what you do, but why you do it mm -hmm. that— that he cares yeah. about. You know are I mean? you doing it to really help that person, or are you doing it to give yourself the satisfaction that you had to fix what they did wrong? Right, exactly. That you had that you, you had to let them know. Yeah. That they did it wrong, and so, I mean, some things people just like. I have a habit of, 
I wear these flip-flop shoes all the time. I got, I don't know how many pairs of them. They've got rhinestones on them, and they're a little, you know, a little thick sole. I wear them around the house all the time. They're easy to get on and off. And we have our bathroom, and we've got a big round footstool in the middle of the bathroom. And I have a tendency to leave. I want to take those shoes off. I'll leave them by that footstool. And this morning, again, Dave almost tripped over them. And he's told me, I don't know how many times, don't leave your shoes there. Even like for me, he, he doesn't want me to leave them there because he said, you get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom, you're going to fall over those shoes. Well, I can't tell you how hard it was for me to just listen to him and put those shoes <laughs> over in a corner where nobody could find out. Why are we so pig-headed that we just don't <laughs> want to listen to anybody? And uh, so... <laughs> You know, just just to go do something without having to talk back mm -hmm. is, you know, well, you leave your shoes there too, or you know, the snappy we, responses. The snappy responses because we don't, I don't know, we want to look like we we know everything, and so I mean, it, it comes up all the time. I mean, if you start really listening to the Holy Spirit about what you say, you're going to say a whole lot less. Yeah, than one what of you them do. that I, that I had not too long ago was um, something happened and and someone did something and I was hurt by it. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't a small thing, but it wasn't terrible either. And for whatever reason, it was so strong on me. Every time I started to talk about that or I started to tell somebody else, God was just like, no, you, you, yep. you don't need to bring this back up. You don't need to talk about it. And it was just, every time it was just like, no, you, you shouldn't yeah. do it. And that was hard because yeah. I wanted other people to kind of feel my pain mm -hmm. or I wanted to, and we do have to deal with things at times. I'm not right. saying shove things down, but just at, there comes a point that you just have to not continue to live in it. Right. And actually, Ginger, that's part of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you, you are to... Forgive your enemy, pray for them, bless, and do not curse them. Mm. And to bless means to speak well of, to curse means to speak evil of. So we really should not say something to somebody else that's going to make them think badly mm -hmm. of that person. And the thing that's interesting about that is I've had people tell me things that people have done, and I actually think, I wish you wouldn't have told me that. Because even if you don't want to believe it, it still is stuck in you. And we really can do harm to the people that we're talking to by right. telling them. Now, you can't unhear something. No, you can't unhear something. I do believe that there are times when we just really need to vent. We need to tell, we just need to talk it out sure. with somebody. And if that's the case, then you need to have a spiritually mature, trusted friend or family member that you can just say, I just, I just need to get rid of this. But you don't have to keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up. Yeah. Yeah, similarly, and this surprises me sometimes, but there are even times when um, God will kind of prompt me not to share something about someone else that's not even um, a bad thing or a secret or anything like that. But sometimes we just need to not talk so much about other people's business. Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's exactly. really important is I, we don't need to share everything we know. The Bible tells us to be discreet and to keep other people's secrets. And there are certain things that maybe that person wants the privilege of telling that. Right. You know, like you said, even if it's something good, you know, we don't, oh, did you hear that? You know, Joyce got so and so, or blah blah blah. Well, maybe I would like to tell that. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of flat if you're excited about something and you go to somebody and say, "Oh, I want to tell you something God did for me," and and somebody would say, "Oh yeah, Ginger already told me that." Yeah, and I prayed for it too. And, yeah, and I pray, <laughs> and I prayed for it too. <laughs> and so there are probably people watching or thinking, "Oh, really? Did you have to talk about that today?" Because <laughs> there is nobody that doesn't deal with this. Yeah. I mean, nobody. Yeah. And it's, uh, it is very important. Our words are very important. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And those who indulge it 
will eat the fruit of it, rather for life or death. So that you're going to eat those words came straight out of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I do find that you, you learn so much and you're so much happier when you do take that prompting from the Holy right. Spirit and not say those things. What would you suggest to someone so that they can maybe get a little bit quicker at hearing those prompts from the Holy Spirit? What's the best way to kind of stay in touch with those things? Well, I think, first of all, you should really have yourself a nice long list of all the scriptures in the Bible about the mouth. And there is a long list. I mean, oh, there's just, yeah. the Bible has a lot to say about it. And I think most people that we're talking to probably love God, and they, they want to do what's right. But the mouth is like a wild animal. It says in James, it can be tamed by no one. God has to help us do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, probably, it's probably the hardest thing to control is your mouth, your words. We just want to talk mm -hmm. and we want to tell. And the Bible says that anybody who talks a lot is going to get in trouble. And anybody who talks too hastily, in other words, we need to think yeah. about what we're going to say. So I think if you know how important it is, that's going to help you. And then learning to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because He doesn't scream and yell, He whispers. And so it takes developing a sensitivity to where you do get that, I call it a knowing. It's just a knowing. I don't, I don't need to be, mm -hmm. to be doing that. Yeah. You know? And... Uh, so I, I think this is a good area for people to start thinking about. It's going to be a lot of quiet, a lot more quiet in a lot of homes yeah, it today. Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. You're welcome. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace.